Hi guys, and welcome back to Scale Motor. I understand it has been a little while, and uh, this probably isn't the video you were expecting next. Um, but I will go over that in a in a bench update. We're going to be starting a new kit, and it is the Meng Ford GT40. Um, uh, heard quite a bit about this, seen a, a couple of inbox reviews, so I thought I'd uh, give it a go. After I bought it and after I started it, I heard some other things um, about it. But first thing first is uh, I decided what scheme I was going to go for and just went through and marked off anywhere that the A scheme was mentioned. Um, the reason I decided to go for this one was because I really like that blue colour and uh, I recently put in an order with Gravity Paints and that was the, the colour I got, the, gul the Gulf Blue. Really, really, really nice colour. So that's what we went with in the end. So we're just uh, starting off trimming some bits. Um, the other kind of body parts came in their own separate bags, so there was nothing to cut, really. Um, there's a little bit of spray on there, but we're going to keep that on for the time being because it'll help us to mount the parts and, uh, and whatnot. But I'm just going to use the side cutters to trim close to the part. And then we came in with some files and uh, and some sanders. And looking at my watch by that, I can see that this was actually recorded on my birthday. So yeah, that's what I was doing on my birthday. I was sitting at the bench, building a model. Like I said, just uh, coming in, trimming up, and then we're going to use the, the knife just to get the big... Just to get as close as we can, really. Uh, you don't have to use the knife, and to be honest, I probably I probably shouldn't because I do mess up more than I should. Um, I believe what I was just doing there was waving goodbye on the live show, the ISM live show over on uh, International Scale Modeler. At least I hope that's what I was doing because if not, I have no idea why I was flailing my arm around like a wacky waving flailing arm inflatable tube man. So one thing I did notice about the kit is that the, the mould lines weren't very deep. As you can see we've already gone through one side. Um, so what I've decided to do is come in with the knife, uh, a craft knife and just deepen those mould lines. Um, so started very lightly just going over the lines, um, made sure that I was just going over the lines um, and just making them as deep as as I could with the uh, with the craft knife. Um, there were some corners to deal with and on the top of the roof there was a, a big curve which um, I'd like to say went well but I missed quite a few times and did leave some scratches in the roof which we did have to sand out. But a bit of sanding sorted them right out and a couple of them are going to be covered uh, with decals anyway so you, you, you can't really see them. So I used the sharp side of the knife first just to kind of get into the groove I suppose um, and then we use the back side of the blade to kind of scrape more material away and then we actually did come in sideways with the blade just to clean up the edges um, the blade didn't really clean up the edges uh, that well uh, left kind of like fuzzy bits and probably because this, this isn't the sharpest blade it wasn't a new blade so um, as you can see, what I'm doing now is just using, there we go, that's, that's what I mean by going sideways, just kind of trying to clean up the edges, um, but it didn't go too well, like I said, it's, it's left some, uh, some fuzzy bits, so, so yeah, um, I don't have a proper panel line engraver scriber tool. Um, I should invest in one to be honest because I've done this more than once so what I did do is use this iFixit screwdriver set and use a small flat-headed screwdriver to uh, 
kind of scrape away and, and, and flatten bits. And surprisingly, it worked quite well. So yeah, there's there's the curves on the roof, which, uh, yeah, yeah, they were not fun at all. I think the hardest part wasn't that curve on the roof, it was actually these very, very small 90 degree curves. Just getting them, starting them off with, with the blade was not easy. Um, but we got that in the end and they look semi-acceptable, so so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll settle for semi-acceptable, I suppose. Next up, um, just using the UMP sanding sponges, um, I find this one's great for just getting, uh, getting those little scratches where we may or may not have missed with the blade originally. Um, these did really help. This, sorry, sander did really help sand out those little scratches, um, and and it did neaten things up quite a bit. And the problem is, when you're sanding, um, you've obviously you've got to be careful because you don't want to sand away any any moulded in details. But you do get little bits of plastic which are going to get stuck in those mould lines. So then we just want to grab anyone's toothbrush. Um, and just give it a wipe, uh, just make sure you wipe it off on your jeans and then uh, pop it back in the bathroom. And now the uh, the A variant, which I was doing, which you'll see if you if you have the kit, um, we had to remove some of these weird little knobbly bits on the side. Uh, I think they like markers or lights or, or something. Anyway, I'm not exactly certain what they are. Um, but there were two to remove on each side and... Um, I opted for the blade rather than spending three quarters of an hour sanding them off very, very gently. Um, we used the blade and we did leave a couple of gouges, so we did need to come back in with the sanders anyway. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, maybe start with uh, with a sander. You can tell this isn't a new blade because I'm actually using my thumb to stop the blade from uh, from slipping and, and, and going everywhere and I still have a thumb so I'm kind of glad I didn't go with a new blade uh, and then just to sand sand it off um, to try and get it nice and flat I'm using a um, an old UMP uh, thinny stick um, and the old ones, these ones, as you can tell, that is used and abused. Uh, I just cut a bit off the end. The old ones, the the grit kind of when it gets clogged and gets all used, um, it's really it's really good for the the kind of finer stuff. And like I said, you can just cut it off and uh, use it. That sander thinny stick was as clean as this one when it first came. But this 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 one is my favourite uh, of the sanders. Um, is it strange having a favourite sander? Oh well. Um, yeah, so that's why the other one has been used and abused. Okay, next up we had to stick these uh, little scoops on the back. They do have a proper name and I cannot for the life of me remember what the proper name for them is. Um, so yeah, we're just going to stick them on. Um, I think they're both the same, but they do have two different size locating points. So one goes one side, um, and the other one fits on both sides. So just be careful uh, you don't glue one in and then realise the other one doesn't fit. Just test fit them beforehand. Um, I almost made that mistake. <laughs> But we're just going to come in with the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, um, put a little bit on the locating points, pop the part on where it needs to go, and then we're just going to use the Extra Thin around the edge to let the capillary action pull in that glue, and then we're just going to give it a push down, uh, just to make sure it's bonded nicely. and then repeat for the other one. Uh, 
Okay, and then it came to mounting the parts ready for priming. Um, this time, because of these random bits of sprue we've got in the in the windows, I decided to use some um, some styrene rod, um, and I used the extra thing to stick it to the bit of sprue, and then a bit of super glue in the end with a cocktail stick, just so it actually stick into the polystyrene. And we done this on all the body parts. Um, I think I actually super glued the the one onto the base just because it's easier to snap off and, and clean up afterwards. Um, yeah, and there's there's nothing on the base that's getting cut out. Um, and like the, the body shell, um, obviously we're going to cut these bits of sprue out eventually. And there we go, I wanted something to grab onto and I wanted them nice and high, just so they weren't interfering with each other and they stack on quite well not going anywhere okay so next up we're on to priming um i wanted a lighter primer and i realized that i actually i wanted to use white but i didn't have white i realized that we didn't i didn't have a light primer and this was the lightest i had and i thought well We'll give this a go. It's been sitting on my shelf for a very, very, very long time. So we just had to spend about two years shaking the bottle um, just to make sure everything was all mixed up. Um, yeah, and um, that comes straight out of the bottle. It's unthinned into the airbrush and then we're just going to spray it on uh, in light coats, because it's zero paints and zero paints are rather hot, I tend to avoid them, um, really. Um, just because I've just heard so many horror stories and I've had issues myself in the past, so I tend to avoid them. But I wanted a lighter colour, so I thought we'd give it a go here. So we're just going to do a very, very thin coat because I don't want to craze the plastic. And then once we've done that thin coat, we're going to set the parts aside um, for about five minutes um, five ten minutes just leave, leave it off gas um, but it was at this point I started to notice it wasn't spraying really great so I thought we'll try we'll give it five minutes now um, and there we go just leave it five minutes do whatever you want in those five minutes maybe practice spinning a pen around um, uh, and then we came back to it for the second coat. Um, and yeah, I just realised at this point it, it really, really wasn't spraying well at all. Um, it was kind of spitting and and I, I thought that was just because I hadn't shaken it up enough. But I couldn't be bothered to shake it up anymore. Um... So yeah, what i done is I just made sure it was nice and closed, and then uh, just make sure it wasn't going to go anywhere, and I just got rid of it. Um, bye. Um, so yeah, then we just we move on to uh, a trusty old UMP primer. I absolutely love the UMP primer. This is the only one I got, and the only reason I didn't use it at first is because it was quite a dark primer. So I thought, well, this is a water-based paint. It's a Vallejo model colour. I thought maybe I'll add it to the UMP primer with a bit of UMP thinner and uh, and see what happens. And we did get a nice light coloured primer. It worked quite well. I was actually chuffed. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to do that from now on. Um, every single time I paint, I end up putting a hole in my glove. As you can see, um, by this point, I had already ripped the thumb off my glove. Hmm. The good thing is with the UMP primer is it's water based so you don't have to leave leave it off gas in between you can actually watch it dry um, it's actually really really forgiving and really really nice to use uh, so we're just making sure we get in all these little gaps because there are quite a few so just be careful and you want to make sure you get the the inner arches and, and everything um, and it was about this point where I realized hmm this this isn't spraying as as well as I had hoped. 
and so that led me to believe actually it was my airbrush so I give it a clean um, and what do you know it worked ten times better so it wasn't the zero paints so we'll, uh, we'll bring up but actually I can't be bothered shaking it for 45 minutes so yeah never mind bye oh yeah and there we go there's my uh, my prime thumb so after we done the primer we we got about three quarts of the primer um, we're moving on to the gravity colors um, 60s and 70s gulf blue um, first time using gravity paints they are a hot kind of automotive paint so much like the zero paints um, they are more forgiving I have heard um, so I did actually try a test I say a test piece on the inside of one of the uh, of the front shell um, where it says Meng and GT40 I sprayed it a little, little heavier just to see if I could get it to craze just to see how far I could push it really um, but yeah we want to leave this five minutes in between um, each coat um, I'm just doing some some maths in this these five minutes um, yeah some good sums um, yeah um, build it up slowly I think we ended up with about seven or eight coats in total um, just keep going slow thin layers leaving it five minutes in between each time um, and yeah um, keep going until you get the color that you're happy with and then you can leave it there So I believe this is on our seventh court, maybe, uh, there or thereabouts. Um, yeah, again, not going thicker, uh, still nice thin coat, um, you don't want to do wet coats with this stuff, um, just in case, you know, you don't want to end up crazing the plastic. Um, but yeah, it did seem to be a lot more forgiving than, uh, than zero paints. Thankfully, um, but yeah, it's quite hard to see on the camera because it just looks grey, um, which is quite annoying. Uh, depending on where the light is, you can actually see the blue. Um, but yeah, uh, seven or eight coats in total. Um, just go with your gut. Um, when you think it looks good, it's done. Um, yeah, there we go. So once we give all that uh, a little bit to dry, we moved on to decaling. Um, so we're starting off with the micro set, um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put a nice little, nice little wet layer down, just so we can put the decal down and the decal will slide about. Um, yeah, um, I started off with these on the side just because they were going to be the easiest decals, I think, um, just because they were long and flat. Uh, there was one on each side, um, but I've just got some warm water to my right. Um, I put the decals in, and to be fair, you, they didn't have to be in the water for long. The only problem is, I, I say the only problem, I, I really wasn't impressed with the decals. Um, they seemed quite thick um, and the decal solutions normally I can put some decal solution on um, and within five ten minutes I can see a change in the decal um, you know it starts to conform starts to soften up um, yeah it wasn't the case with these um, it, they, they require a bit more work um, so at this point I was using the UMP strong decal solution I did move on to the extra strong um, but yeah after doing these decals on the side um, and seeing how how little they reacted uh, the same with these decals on the roof because there is a, a vent kind of thing towards the back of the roof here and the extra strong didn't really do much 
to the decal um, to get it to conform around the, the fins on the vent. So yeah, after doing these, I was a little bit worried about the the two red teardrops around the um, uh, around the lights on the front. Um, yeah, but I opted to go for these first just because I thought they'd be easier to line up um, and we can deal with the annoying ones later on. And these are the annoying ones. Uh, once you've got them into place, I used a tip which uh, I've not done before and I was inspired this time by uh, Richard Clements over at Speed in Scale where he's just built one of these and he said that the decals went down really, really nice with a hairdryer. So I gave the hairdryer a go and after blowing everything all across the table, there was a really, really scary crease in this decal. Um, which is why I panic grabbed the the tweezers, but luckily enough, we were managed to uh, we managed to get that crease out. You see me wet my fingers, just try and push it down, and we did. We got it out in the end. So yeah, for these, I would say um, UMP extra strong, and. Uh, a little bit of hair dry in and a bit of brute force with your thumb be careful because I, I did break one um, but I managed to put it all back together and you can't really notice so there we go we've uh, we've got our base coat down we've got all of our decals down see we managed to get them down they were not scary um, but now I realise that there's there surely there should be red in those little vents on the front, and I've two K'd. Hmm. Ah oh well. Anyway, we'll 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 gloss over that. Haha. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just masking up these back parts now because they are part of the engine bay, and I don't think they're going to be two K'd. Um. The underneath is going to need to be painted a different colour. Um, but I thought I'd paint over the 2K because I'm guessing the underside of a car isn't going to be clear coated. Especially on a race car, I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, anyway, I thought I'd paint over the clear coat. And it's the gravity colours. So and what we're going to need is our three part gravity uh, 2K. We're going to need some pipettes and a ramekin you stole from your mother about 10 years ago um, but she doesn't know that so we'll just pretend it's mine um, so we've mixed up the paint in the ramekin the reason I use the ramekin is because that's the only 10 mil thing I had which wasn't plastic um, and then I realized that I hadn't cleaned my airbrush after the blue paint so quick uh, quick clean filled with 2k and then we're on to painting um, so I started off with a little tack coat and uh, literally um, try to think how how Dan Croak at the Dan Cave described it and it's like a sticky shiny pebble dash is uh, is what we're looking for and um, yeah so that's what I'm looking for um, a sticky shiny pebble dash and then once we've got that sticky shiny pebble dash down, we're gonna give it our standard five to ten minutes, um, just to off gas and just to just to tack up. Um, and again, in that five to ten minutes, you can do as you please. I took to reading some serious serious literature. Um, We got him. There he is. There he is. We got him. Anyway, um, the second coat was another tack coat. Um, just a little bit thicker this time. And then we went, this is our third coat. Um, and I just went ham, went nuts. Um, get a nice wet coat down um, to the point where it's not going to, it's not going to run. Um, but uh, the, the advice I use is what I hear from Paul over at ISM um, and it's at, at this stage uh, 
what you get is what it's going to look like when it's dry. So we want to try and avoid any um, orange peel. Um, just go around the part and then if you see orange peel, go back, fill it in with a bit more pri uh, primer, with a bit more clear coat. Um, don't prime at this stage, it, you'll ruin it. Um, yeah, just fill it in with a little bit more clear coat. And there we have it. Um, just a couple of photos of before the clear coat, um, before the decal in. Yeah, I'm quite happy with the, the gravity colours. Um, and I'm quite happy with the with the Gravity 2K. It's not the first time I've used it. It's the second time I've used it. It's the second time I've done 2K. The first time was off camera, just in case. Um, but yeah, um, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Have a great day and stay safe.